Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Michelangelo again because I had some fun with this thing. As you can see, we're on the map, two brothers, and we got the middle spawn. So it's pretty much forced that we have to push middle with this ship, especially given this matchmaker. Look at this, we are top tier. I think Michelangelo is pretty similar to Napoli. I've said that a couple times where it yellows in secondary smoke, feels pretty similar. But this ship plays against tier 7s every once in a while, and that is just not fair. Sure, we don't have the armor that the Napoli does, but against tier 7s, it's a little unfair what this ship is capable of doing. It is very, very, very fun to just full send with this ship. Yeah, the turret angles are awkward to middle turrets like this, but the secondaries, the brawling potential is unbelievable with this thing, given the right matchmaker. We do, of course, have a carrier to worry about in this one, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we are going to use this smoke aggressively to push in. I often try to make people or get people to use these smokes as a defensive tool to allow them to go dark, heal up a little bit. But in Michelangelo's case, it's just going to let us get out from this choke point and get into the thick of it with the enemy team. These torpedoes are kind of ridiculous as well. I didn't really consider it, but these nearly have a 24,000 damage alpha and go 72 knots. Sure, you only get three of them per side, but that is still a lot of damage. And in a brawling situation, that is very, very powerful, much more so than Napoli, let's say. So this Iowa here, we're not shooting because we don't want to give our position away just yet. If we can stay in stealth like this, we obviously want to. And the Iowa going straight. Yeah, he's gonna eat all of those torpedoes. Nearly doing his full health bar. <laughs> pretty good. So, you know, that would be pretty much a dev strike combined with the main guns as well as those torpedoes. That's 100k already. And now, of course, up close with the Alsace here as well as this Nagato. Well, the Alsace is probably gonna turn away. This Nagato is kind of stuck. So we're, of course, gonna torp him. And then we've swapped over to the AP, and we're gonna get a couple Citadels in with this armor piercing. These are, what, 320 millimeter guns? Pretty solid stuff. And just two Torps was enough to do 33k to him. <laughs> yeah, pretty ridiculous. Carrier, of course, is gonna end the fun a little bit early here, but the Alsace is gonna take some serious damage before we do happen to go down in this one. Very, very fast game. Don't worry, I have another match for you guys as well to take a look at. But this is just what Michelangelo can do. Napoli, of course, can as well. There's several others that have this ability to brawl like this. But given that this one can face tier 7s as a tier 9 ship, that's pretty powerful. Amusingly enough, our secondary hits are actually blocking our damage counter. So what do we think we got in the first five minutes of this game? <laughs> that was nearly 200,000 damage in five minutes and we had to travel across the map too. Uh, kind of ridiculous um, how much damage this ship can output. When you're at close range like that, the secondaries are firing off both sides, just ridiculous. And I really do think these secondaries are just better than Napoli's, even though we do miss out on a little bit of range. I think it's important to realize the big secondaries actually are turrets that can fire on either side of the ship. So. Against a single target, I think these secondaries are just even more insane. You get way more on target than a Napoli would. Although, when you're in the thick of it with people, it is a little tricky on which target you actually want these bigger secondaries to shoot at, since they are the ones that will pen more than 32 millimeters of armor. It's higher than that. I think it's is it 36 or is it 32? I actually kind of forget at the moment. But the small ones only pen 26. Uh, so that is only for superstructures or lower tier battleships, cruisers, destroyers, that kind of thing. You saw us kind of one shot of Holland <laughs> yellowing around uh, in that initial video. Yeah, they're pretty insane against uh, destroyers, of course, as well as cruisers. But these big guns are the powerhouse where you're going to do some serious damage to the battleships as well. And having them as turrets is really, really nice, allowing you to shoot them on either side, like I said. But I do think the sacrifice to the main guns is a little awkward. It is a bit of an awkward ship to play. This is, of course, the Battle Pass ship when it comes to the Christmas update here. And I think it's a fun ship. And that's really important for a Battle Pass ship. Typically, sorry, Dockyard. I meant to say Dockyard. I, I apologize. Dockyard, Dockyard, Dockyard. Uh, this is the Dockyard ship for the Christmas patch. And typically, they're not the greatest ships in this game. Uh, but this one's really fun. I don't 
think it's going to be OP, especially considering the armor. Once people get used to where to shoot this thing, it's nowhere near as armored as a Napoli is, for example. So I do think it will die a little bit quicker. I've died plenty of times in this ship. Don't think these two games were my only games I played. There were some pretty fast, boring games where I just died very quickly trying to send it into people with this ship. So I don't think it's going to be OP, but I think it's fun. And I think that's what's important when it comes to a dockyard ship. It should be fun and unique especially considering it takes so long and so much time to get it, on top of the money you're going to spend if you do buy those starter passes to actually get this ship. Also to keep in mind, as we're getting into this new Christmas patch, the Sharnors 43 that we looked at yesterday, yeah, clarifying that a little bit more because uh, I recorded that video a little while ago before I uh, really knew what that battle pass was going to look like, it is halfway through the battle pass on the free side, the free track. And that should be a little bit easier for you to get since it's not at the very end of the battle pass. If you're playing a little bit through Christmas, I do think most players will actually just get the Sharnors 43 for free. Uh, it's not entirely just given to everyone, but based on what it seems like it's going to be, it seems like a bit of a Christmas gift from Wargaming. That's kind of the, what the Sharnors 43 is going to be. There you see we're a little too broadside to the Florida, which takes a big hit. Uh, but cool to see that this Christmas event isn't just heavily monetized ships like the Michelangelo, like the Kitakami, like the Defense, and those other ships in that salvage event that is going to take a lot of in-game resources to get. It's cool to see that something fun like the Sharnors 43, Michelangelo are going to be available during this Christmas season. And especially that Sharnors 43, that thing... Being almost free to players is such a cool idea to give people for Christmas. I really, really do like that. And seeing Michelangelo be a fun option in the dockyard is also really cool. Using our smoke here to go dark a little bit, uh, just so we don't eat a massive hit coming around this corner. But you better believe we're pushing around this corner. There's battleships, there's a crunch down with radar, which is a little scary given we're using our smoke at the moment. but. Land some torpedoes on this Richelieu, hopefully. Gonna do some decent damage and push in even more with these secondaries. <laughs> I've been just full sending it basically with the Michelangelo. Obviously you could play a little more passive and wait for people to push you or time your pushes a little better than just full send at people. Uh, but this is a pretty fun way to play, especially considering how well Michelangelo actually does with this. Napoli is a similar case where it's a little bit more focused on uh, tanking than a Michelangelo would be, but still, basically the same idea here where we just run at people with these secondaries, these torpedoes, and just do a ton of damage. This game was getting out of hand, and I think our push here is decent at pushing back the enemy team. I didn't actually see the results of these games. I probably lost at least this one, maybe the first one as well, I'm not sure. I was really just battling on after these because I had my fun brawl and I move on to the next one. <laughs> uh, we'll wait a second to take out the Richelieu through his bow there, waiting for a good angle with the armor piercing. The armor piercing seems pretty good on these guns, by the way. Um, the accuracy is not the most consistent thing in the world, but the AP seems to have pretty decent pen, so I might have to use that a little bit more. Not sure about a full main gun build, for example, but certainly looking towards buffing those guns, or at least using them as more AP-focused guns in the future. And that's actually it for those two games. Just some fast, brawling fun in the Michelangelo. Been kind of running it down today, as I was in the Michelangelo, as well as that Charnors 43. Very enjoyable ships, both of them if you're pushing in like I was. Um, they can work as well if you play a little more passive, but I mean, if they work pushing in that aggressively, why not, right? The build has stayed the same for me here. Still just going with the Pack-A-Punch, which is for secondaries as well as those torpedoes. That's where some of that uh, damage buff comes from, that insane damage that we can get on them. But again, secondary focused on this one, of course, just because the secondaries are so good and are kind of the main focus of the ship, <laughs> considering you can't even fire your main guns forward, yet those secondaries can. Uh, Upgrades-wise, still exactly the same. Full sending those secondaries, just because they do so much damage at those closer ranges. Again, here is the armor that I was talking about. Nowhere near as well armored as Napoli is. 
That's why I don't think it's going to necessarily feel as OP to fight against. This isn't even 27, by the way. It's only 25, so 380 millimeter guns will easily overmatch this and anything above it as well. So make sure you're aiming for the bow and the stern on these things if you are shooting at it. And uh, if it does go broadside, yeah, you can definitely just smash it into the Citadel. There is no turtleback gimmick here. It's just 200 millimeters plus 60. So 260 millimeters with some space in it. Sure, that could be a little annoying, but a lot of battleships and even cruisers at this tier will easily be able to punch through that at closer ranges and battleships out to longer ranges too. So I think this one is much better balanced than the Napoli and just as much fun, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a very, very enjoyable time. So what do you think of the Michelangelo? Are you thinking of going for this dockyard? Keep in mind over Christmas that you might not have time to grind it like you otherwise would. You have other commitments with family, of course. Um, but it is a fun ship. And if not, you still get a fun ship in the Sharn Wars 43 almost for free. There is some time commitment there, but it shouldn't be too much of a grind to get that one at least. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.